I didn't think we'd be rehashing an old Super Bowl this morning, but no, no, not a 13 year old Super year old Super Bowl, but no. So what happens? Super, That's teenage that, Super Bowl. Teenage Super Bowl. And let me tell you, it's uh it's surprising because I didn't I just didn't see it coming from this guy. Who we're talking about is Max Starks, former offensive tackle for the Pittsburgh Steelers, showed up on 93-7 the fan on Radio Row at the Super Bowl a place that we we have to get to. I'm sure we're not the only ones that are hoping to get there, but we will get there. Um, talked about his last Super Bowl appearance with the Steelers. Super Bowl, oh man, I don't even know the name of it. XL, what, what, what would that be? 13 years ago would be XLV. So that's... That'd be 40. 35. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 45. 45? 40, yeah, 45, 45 is the number. That's a good one. Um, 45 and said that the Steelers loss for those of you who don't know, the Steelers fell to the green Bay Packers that year, 31 to 25. Um, the loss was, this is, this is the quote. I think we're going to, tr we were trying to make sure guys had opportunities for bigger trophies at the end. I'll just leave it at that. Then a little ways later, he goes, if you take one less pick away from that game, we're talking about seven times Super Bowl champions instead of just six time. A lot of people blame that loss on Rashad Mendenhall and his fumble. You look back, this guy, Max Starks is blaming it on Ben Roethlisberger without, you know, coming out and saying it, but most times when you're not going to name a name, you are really, really naming a name. Do you, you know, you, what do you take away from this? When you woke up and read this one, what, what were you thinking? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't remember, you know, this wasn't a Super Bowl I watched super closely when I was a kid, but yeah, dude, how old were you in the Super Bowl? Like 13, well, 13 years ago? Yeah, I must have been. You nine. were nine. Uh, yeah, I was nine years old. So, I mean, <laughs> take this with a grain of salt, but I, I don't know. Like it just, it's weird. First of all, I don't know. It, yeah, I think you have to have a, um, a certain uh, dislike for guys yeah. to, it, it, and it's one thing to think, oh man, Ben threw that a lot. I thought a running game could have worked in that game, but then to like to to bring it up one more time, thirteen years later, is a little weird. And I think just speaks to a little bit of the relationship that Ben had with his teammates at the time. Um, it wasn't always. I don't know. Ben probably thought that he was the best player on that team, and there was a lot of reason for him to believe that. Um, and a lot of reason for him to want to put the game in his hands, but I can certainly understand how Ben Roethlisberger of all people might've rubbed people, rub, rubbed some of his teammates the wrong way. Um, and, and at a certain point wanting to win as much as he did can sometimes, I don't know, make may not drive other people away, but you know, rub people the wrong way. And I, I, I believe he felt this way. I don't know if, I don't know. The, I, I, one of the points he brought up was Ben throwing it 40 times versus the team running 40 it 40 times. Yeah, 23. And Rashad Mendenhall ran for like, I have the stats here. So Ben went 25 for 40 for 263 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And while that second interception was on a two, the two minute drive and, you know, in an instance where it was, it, it was do or die most of the time, that's going to lead to something bad. The first interception was a deep ball to Mike Wallace. That was nowhere near Mike Wallace and then returned for a touchdown on the pick six. So that's not great. Meanwhile, Rashad Mendenhall, while he did have a very costly fumble, rushed 14 times for 63 yards and a touchdown. And Ben also had four rushes for 31 yards. I mean, it, it is. It, I don't know. I, I kind of get it. Like if you're Ben Roethlisberger, you've already won two. You're at your third. Both times that you've won a Super Bowl, the wide receiver, the star wide receiver of that game has walked away with MVP. So you got to be itching for one, you know, like a, a, a Super Bowl MVP would be very nice. On top of that, you don't have, you know, your, Rashad Mendenhall is young. He's new to the league. You're not totally convinced that he's that guy. I mean, maybe you do just put way too much in your hands but at the same time, like guys got to be you, they had one of the best offensive lines in football. Like guys got to be pushing like, hey, guys, let's just run the ball. Maybe that'll yeah. work on top of that. Green Bay did have one of the best. I mean, that was the the Charles Woodson was on that team. Um, I mean, Nick Collins was on that team. I believe Darren Sharp was on that team. 
Um, I don't remember who the other, there was another big name corner that was on that team as well. It, it was just, it was, it was a great secondary. 13 years though. I think that's the biggest headline, the bigger headline here. We could go back and forth about was it his fault? Was it not his fault? I think the bigger headline is for somebody to be holding that grudge for 13 years, years to come out and say that. I mean, what does that say about Ben Roethlisberger? Is that just a show of maybe how differently some guys view him than others? Well, yeah, I mean, so we're not the ones that had to interact with, I mean, you had to interact with Ben Roethlisberger almost every day at a certain point. Um, yeah. But, you know, we are not the ones who were in the locker room every day with him. Um, I'm sure it's, it's not hard to imagine that we, that fans and, and we have kind of a different view maybe of Ben than, than his teammates do. And it's, I, I do understand it too, a little bit, a guy who was on the offensive line, it was a good offensive line. Like, there could be some feelings that like, well, why didn't our coaches trust us? You know, we were yeah. just as capable of, you know, having that game in our hands as well. Um, you know, running to keep up with a team that scored 35 points seems, you know, seems a little dicey, but yeah, I, it's, True. that's interesting that there was, that just, it this was held on for, held on to for that long. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, I think Ben does have a reputation for being a little bit prickly, but you know, I'm sure there wasn't, I don't know. This also feels like an issue you should have taken up with his offensive coordinator too. Yeah. 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 It feels like something like Max Starks is around the team all the time. He's there every Sunday. Feels like maybe this could have got out, you know, a little bit. And and I'm sure he was backed into a corner when he was asked about it, mm -hmm. but like, I don't know, like you, you dropped it. You dropped the ball. You didn't, nobody was like, he didn't say something that was very secretive, even though he tried to be secret. He was as blatant as blatant could be mm -hmm. about whose fault he believes it was. And I don't even know if it's like all Ben, like maybe he was looking at it and going like, yeah, Ben wanted his, but at the same time, like maybe Mike Tomlin had issues there. I don't remember who was the offensive coordinator. Was that the Todd Haley days? It might've been Todd Haley. If it wasn't Todd Haley, it was possibly Bruce Arians. Though mm -hmm. Those guys, maybe it was one of them that was just had too much stock in Ben Roethlisberger, not enough stock in the running game. Maybe it was a jab at everybody. I don't know though. For a guy that hangs out there that long, you'd, you'd think that the, those would come out sooner than 13 years later, but I don't know. Here we, here we are. Ben never went back there. The Steelers never went back there. That was the end of it. It was a rough time to uh, tend it. Maybe that's why he's bringing it up to say like, Hey, look at, you know, maybe there's a reason that the Steelers never returned to the Super Bowl. They never had a great running back after that. Outside of Le'Veon Bell, who they refused to pay. Yeah. I don't know. Definitely question, questionable. But definitely very shocking to wake up right, to that this weird. morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's Super Bowl week. Things are coming out left and right. I actually love Radio Row because you talk to everybody and you just sit there and you scroll through your timeline. It's just the most random human beings right? talking about the most random. I was watching Sugar Sean yesterday on the pat mcafee show and i was like this guy is electric why is he at a super bowl like what is the point there and it's just it's pretty it's pretty awesome 